Bonsoir tout le monde. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here today and welcoming me so warmly uh, onto the traditional territory of the Saskatchewan Treaty 4 First Nations. Uh, it's uh, an honour and a pleasure to be here. Uh, it's great to be back in Saskatchewan. I'm uh, joined here uh, by our uh, Minister for uh, uh, Public Safety, uh, Ralph Goodale, who's uh, right here. Uh, and. Uh, I bring greetings uh, from your local MP, uh, Andrew Shear, who I spoke with a couple of hours ago and uh, asked me to pass along his very best to you as well uh, and regrets that he couldn't be here with us tonight. Uh, tomorrow morning, I'll be meeting with uh, Premier Wall uh, for the first time since, uh, uh, since uh, the election here, so I'll be uh, congratulating him, but also uh, talking about how uh, well we've been working together uh, since uh, the tragedy in Laloche where, uh, where we last saw each other. Uh, and how uh, the partnership we have on infrastructure, on uh, building a strong future for Saskatchewan is, uh, is going to be continuing uh, together in the, uh, in the coming years. Uh, just moments ago, I finished up a meeting uh, with uh, Tribal Chairperson Edmund Belgard and members of the File Hills Capel Tribal Council, along with leaders of its member First Nations. We were joined by Chief Cameron from the Federation of Saskatchewan Indian Nations and National Chief Belgard from the Assembly of First Nations. We had a good, respectful, and productive conversation. Cette rencontre m'a donné l'occasion de parler des gestes que pose notre gouvernement pour faire avancer les intérêts des Autochtones ici en Saskatchewan et partout au pays. Mais par-dessus tout, c'était une occasion pour moi d'être à l'écoute. I think it's critically important that politicians take the time to listen. I don't want to pretend that any of us have the answers to the challenges facing Indigenous peoples in Canada, but what I will tell you is that as a country, uh, we can build those answers. We cannot turn our collective back on the problems. It's not enough to be outraged by the headlines, the stories of heartbreak and hopelessness that come out of communities like Laloche, Attawapiskat, Natuashish, and so many more. These are stories we need to hear. Before we act, we need to listen to the elders, to the young people, to the parents, to the victims, and to the survivors. They deserve to be heard. I want to thank all the leaders who met with me today for giving me a chance to listen. And I have to underline that uh, it's not just a story of challenges. There's a tremendous story of opportunities and hope uh, that I heard also today. Aujourd'hui, on m'a parlé du travail que fait le Conseil tribal pour appuyer ses communautés locales et stimuler la croissance économique. J'en ai appris plus au sujet des services que le Conseil fournit à ses communautés, notamment sur les efforts consacrés à la gestion de deux refuges pour les femmes et les enfants. Cette conversation m'a rappelé encore une fois qu'aucune relation n'est plus importante pour le Canada que celle que nous avons avec les Premières Nations, la Nation Métis et les Inuits. For my part, I reiterated my government's commitment to rebuilding those relationships and making sure that they are based on respect, recognition of rights, cooperation, and true partnership. We know that much needs to be done, and we know that we can't fix the problems overnight. But we are, all of us, committed to working together as we start to make things right. Over the next five years, our government will invest $8.4 billion on improving the lives of Indigenous peoples right across this country. That includes $2.6 billion to improve primary and secondary education on reserve, and nearly $970 million to repair, build, and maintain new schools on reserve. Over the next two years, we'll focus on improving social infrastructure. That means more housing, and better health care facilities on reserve. It means greater investments in facilities and programs that support early learning and child care, and it means more funding for cultural and recreational centers, as well as programs that help to promote, preserve, and protect Indigenous languages and cultures. We also know that the victims of violence need more help, and starting this year, we're making significant new investments to repair, build, and support shelters for victims of family violence in First Nations communities. 
our work on a national public inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls has already begun. Cette enquête est une priorité pour notre gouvernement car nous faisons face à rien de moins qu'une tragédie nationale. Les femmes et les filles autochtones sont surreprésentées parmi les victimes de violence. C'est un problème auquel nous devons faire face et que nous devons régler. Les victimes méritent la paix, leurs familles méritent d'être entendues et être en mesure d'apaiser leurs souffrances. The inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls needs to provide justice for the victims, healing for the families, and ensure that this ongoing tragedy ceases once and for all. We promised during the election campaign that we would lift the 2% funding cap for First Nations programs. We remain committed to that goal, and the unprecedented investments announced in Budget 2016 sets us well on that path. And we will work with First Nations in the coming year to lay the groundwork for a new fiscal relationship, one that gives First Nations communities funding that is sufficient, predictable, and sustained. As I said, there is much work still to be done. The meetings like the one we had today are an important part of rebuilding the relationship between Canada and Indigenous peoples, and I'm honoured to be part of this ongoing dialogue. 